slope describes the steepness of a line. The symbol for slope is a lowercase m. So mathematically, we'll be using m to represent slope. So when we're looking for the slope of the line, from one point to the next point, we'll be looking for the vertical change, or our y values, over the horizontal change, or our x values. So when you're given a picture of a line, you're going to find two distinct points, and in this case, we are given them. And you're going to count how far off horizontally the one point is to the other, and how far off vertically the one point is from the other. So finding the slope of this line, so it's going to be m equals, and I'm going to find my horizontal change by going from the one point and counting how far horizontally it is from the second point. And I see that it's two spaces away, so the horizontal change, or my x values, is two. And now I'm going to count my vertical change, and I'm going to see that it goes up three. So the vertical change is three. So the slope for this line would be three over two, or three halves. When we're looking for slopes and to determining whether a slope is positive, negative, zero, or undefined, so you always want to look at the graph from left to right. So in a picture, if we're looking from left to right and it slants upward, it's a positive slope. So when we look from left to right, the slope is positive when it goes up. When the slope is going down, the slant is down from left to right. You always want to look the way you read. It is a negative slope. So a slope up is positive. A slope down is negative. Now, when you have a horizontal line, so a horizontal line, we have 0 as our slope. So 0 would be the slope, and a vertical line has an undefined slope. So these are really important. When you're looking at a graph to determine if it's a positive or negative slope, look from left to right. If it's going up, it's positive. Down, it's negative. Now horizontal lines is a slope of 0, and a vertical line is an undefined slope. So this is very important to remember. So I am giving you this little guide to help you to remember, and this is the Mr. Slope guy. And what it does is it kind of shows you in the face what we're looking at. So a positive slope is that plus for the eye. And the wink is my negative slope. And then the nose here represents my vertical, which is the undefined. So you see that U there. And then my, my horizontal is my zero, or my dimples for the guy. So this is a way of remembering your slope of a line, and whether it's positive, negative, undefined, or zero. So when we want to graph a line given a point and a slope, we're going to be doing the reverse. So I'm going to take this point, and I'm going to plot it. So we have a point which is 0, 4, and I plot it. So anytime you have a point, you can at least start by plotting the point. Now I have the point plotted, and I need a second point in order to graph the line. So I'm going to use the slope of the line to be able to find the second point. So remember that my slope is my vertical change over my horizontal change. And when we have an integer, in this case I have a negative 3, I'm going to end up having a negative 3, but remember, any integer or whole number can be create you can create a fraction from it by putting it over 1 so that you can get your horizontal change so your vertical change is the negative 3 and your horizontal change is 1 now when you have a negative slope you always want to move down along the y axis to represent that it's negative, and you always move to the right for the horizontal change. So in this case, I'm going from where the point was plotted, and I'm going to just count down 3 for my vertical change, and then I'm going to count from that spot 
over my horizontal change, which is 1, and then I'm going to plot my second point. So to, to find the uh, line given a point and a slope, first plot the point, then use the slope. And remember, it's the vertical change over the horizontal. And if the slope is negative, put the negative with the vertical change and move down. And always move to the right for the horizontal change. Now I can just graph the line, and I have the picture of the line. Pause and try. So again, you're plotting the point, and you're using your slope, and you have your vertical change and your horizontal change because you have a fraction. And because it's positive, your vertical change will go up 2, and your horizontal change will go over 3 to the right, and you plot your point. And now you can graph the line. When we talk about the slope-intercept form, that is when we have it y equals mx plus b. We have our equation solved for y. Now notice here I have m next to the x value, or the x variable. Well, m, again, represents the slope. So when you have m, the coefficient of the x is always going to be my slope. So the y equals mx plus b, the coefficient of x is my slope. And keep in mind that the slope intercept, we need the intercept, and it's going to be my y-intercept. And the y-intercept will be the b value. Because remember, my y-intercept is where x equals 0. And if I were to plug in 0 into this formula, you would see that I would have m times 0, and that would go away, and my y value would equal b. So therefore, when it's in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, I'll have my slope, the coefficient of x, and I'll have my intercept, my point, 0 comma b. So you always have a point when you have it in slope-intercept form. Now notice here that we could also have it written in function notation where we would have f of x equals mx plus b. f of x and y are the same thing. So f of x is function notation, but also means y. In this equation, y equals 1 half x minus 3, we're asked to identify my slope and my y-intercept. In this case, it's already in slope-intercept form. My slope is going to equal the 1 half, or the coefficient of x. My y-intercept, if I plug in 0 for x, is simply going to be a negative 3. So the order pair for my y-intercept will be 0 comma negative 3. Pause and try. So your slope here is a negative 2, and your intercept is going to be 0, 1. Pause and try. So your slope here is equal to 1 half, and your intercept, to be careful here, because the plus or minus, there's no plus or minus, that means that the intercept would be 0, 0, so at the origin. When you're asked to graph, the equation of a line, and it's in slope-intercept form, you need to identify the slope and the intercept. And once you have the slope and the intercept, you plot the intercept, and you use the slope to find the second point. So we have a, identify your slope, and your slope is 2, and your intercept or your b value is a negative 4, because it's minus 4. So the intercept point would be 0, negative 4. Now you're going to plot that point, that intercept, which would be on the y-axis at negative 4. So we have 0, negative 4. And then you're going to use your slope to find your second point. Now remember, when you have a slope and it's an integer, you're going to put that integer over 1 so you have that horizontal movement. And because it's positive, we're going to move up 2 from that intercept and over positive 1 and plot our second point. 
and now I can graph the line, and this is the graph for y equals 2x minus 4, using the slope and the intercept to graph the line. Pause and try. And my intercept is 0, 1. My slope is equal to a negative 2. I always put the negative with the vertical movement and my horizontal movement is positive 3. I plot the point. I go down negative 2 over positive 3 to the right and graph my line. Finding the slope and the intercept of a line. In order to find the slope and the intercept of the line, we have to have the equation in slope-intercept form where it's y equals mx plus b. So in this equation, 2x plus 6y equals 12, I need to solve the equation for y. So to solve for y, you want to first get rid of what's around it versus what's attached. So I want to move that 2x to the other side of the equal sign. And to move it because it's positive, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. So I'm going to be left with 6y equals a negative 2x plus 12. And the reason why I'm putting the negative 2 next to the equal sign is because I want it in slope-intercept form. And the x variable is next to the equal sign. So now I have to get rid of what's attached to the y, which is that 6. And to get rid of it, I need to divide. Now remember, you have to divide everything on the other side of the equal sign by 6. When you're dividing, I'm dividing everything on the other side of the equal sign, and I'm left with y equals a negative one-third x plus 6. So I reduce the negative 2, 6 to negative one-third, and I reduce the 12 divided by 6 to 2. Now I can identify my slope is a negative one-third, and my y-intercept in this case would be 0, 2. Pause and try. You're going to find your slope-intercept form. You're going to subtract 5x from both sides. You divide through by a negative 3. You're left with y equals 5 thirds x minus 4. And now we can graph it. We're going to graph by using the slope and the intercept. I plot my intercept, and then I'm counting 5 up and over to the right 3 and I graph my line. When you're given an equation and it's just y equals some number, well, when it's y equals some number, the slope is going to be 0. And when the slope is 0, remember, this, it has a horizontal line. So when you're doing this, you're going to go to where the y value is and you're going to draw a horizontal line. So a way of remembering this is that y creates a horizontal line or the horizon uh, so that when you're doing a y equals some number, you're going to go to the y value and you're going to draw a horizontal line. When you have an equation that has x equals a value some number, a, it's undefined, our slope. Our slope is undefined. And when our slope is undefined, we have a vertical line. Another way of remembering this is if you have x equals a number, x can kind of create a vertical line. And that vertical line is what the picture is going to look like. Let's see an example. We're asked to graph the equation of the line y equals a negative 2. The slope of y equals a negative 2 is equal to 0. So the slope is 0. That means that I'm going to have a horizontal line. I go to where y is negative 2, and I draw my horizontal line. My next example is when I have x equals a number, and in this case, x equals 1. I need you to understand that when you have x equals a number, the slope is undefined. When the slope is undefined, we have a vertical line. So you're going to go where x is 1 on the axis, and you're going to draw a vertical line. Pause and try. The slope here is 0. We're going to have a horizontal line at negative 5. Pause and try. 
the slope here is undefined. We're going to have a vertical line where x is 5. 